So, guys, welcome to Octave Hire TV. This is Matt Ramsey from Octave Hire East Voice Studio in Austin, Texas. But today we're reporting live from Las Vegas, Nevada at Institute for Global Advancement Convention 2016. And I'm here with Guy Babasek, master teacher from IVA. And let's get it started. So Guy, um, I've got a couple great questions for you. Okay, from, I, I hope so too, because I feel like um, just in general, I get a few of these questions quite a bit from students. And as kind of a disclaimer, I think a couple of them are very um, technique-based, you know. What can I do besides these vocal exercises to help me with this specific thing? Some of them are more specific than others. But uh, I'd be interested to hear your opinion as to whether you kind of reinforce, oh, you just need to practice this more, or whether it's, you know, there are other things that you can do besides just, you know, the vocal leads that we work on in voice sure. lesson. Um, this is the first one that kind of comes to mind. This one's from J.R. Scrobotic. He asks, how do you transition to high notes smoothly without your voice cracking in the same breath? Oh, well, that's the $60 million question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's a that's a that's a skill. I mean, that's a skill. So now, the, the what I've noticed is that the thinner, bigger voices have a harder time. The thinner voices, like the real high tenors, the real high sopranos, their chords are so small, their instrument is so small that they tend to have less of an audible break. But the bigger, the thicker, and sometimes the more professional, the um, potentially professional quality of voice the harder that break area is, especially at that first passage area. Yeah. With guys, with him, it's probably around somewhere between a, a middle C and an F natural above that. Um, and the, the, the way that you do that is through practice. And you have to practice the right way. You can't just practice whatever. There are specific um, methodologies um, to, you have to basic, there's, if you think about it, there's two basic mechanisms of the voice. There's the lighter mechanism and the heavier mechanism, the chest voice and the head voice. And what we do in, in this technique and any any really positive good technique is we try to develop a, a middle voice, which is a, a, a an amalgam, an amalgamation of those two activities so that they're working in tandem. And it's very difficult because they are very antagonistic yeah. towards one another. Yeah. So the other thing too is that the, the, the little muscles responsible for the, for the inner edges of the vocal folds coming together, which enables a smooth transition, are muscles that you can go your entire life without ever even knowing exist, let alone use, let alone build, let alone coordinate. So and then the muscles that want to interfere with those are things like swallowing muscles, yawning muscles, chewing muscles, you know, Articulating muscles, stuff that we use so much, that are so strong, they're, they're so they're so coordinated. So, to you know, to say, well, wow, why, how come I can't just sing from my low notes to my high notes without a break? It's because it's hard. Yeah. It's very very difficult, and it takes a lot of um, specialized training. And uh, um, you can't usually get it in just singing songs. You need, right. a, you need a decent teacher that really knows what they're doing to be able to to zone in on why the, that voice is having trouble transitioning and giving you and giving the students specific exercises that will that will address those tendencies and, and, and work on them and practice them daily and conscientiously the way that your teacher has taught you to practice them. And little by little over time, just like learning how to do a pull up or learning how to do a sprint or learning how to you know hit hit a, a ball with a bat or or learning how to do a touchdown, it takes time. Now, one more thing, I know this is a long-winded answer. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard question. Yeah, to but a lot of these exercises that we use are the gym exercises. Mm -hmm. And what everybody wants to do is the sport. Right. But they don't want to do the training. And that's like saying, I want to be a great ballet dancer, but I never want to go into the ballet bar. I never want to learn how to do a plie. Right? I, I want to be a concert pianist, but I never want to practice my scales. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. You gotta, you gotta train, you gotta do the gym exercises before you can do the sport. It's beautiful. 
<laughs> Make a great analogy is at, at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning over here. Um, sleep deprived. Yeah, sleep deprived. <laughs> and, and beautiful answers. This is what happens when you've got 10,000 hours of teaching time under your belt. Um, this next question is from Craig Nye. He asks, and maybe kind of along the same lines, and I think that this is an interesting question, because it's such a frequently asked one, how long should I expect it to take before I'm a world-class pop singer? Well, it depends on what, first of all, how you define world-class pop singer. Okay. Uh, I mean, some people would, um, you know, consider Adam Lambert a world-class pop singer. Other people might consider, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Somebody, but it's not as technically uh, great. Somebody else, uh, my brain is bright. Okay. Um, so, you know, with an Adam Lambert, he's what, 28 now? He started lessons when he was 12, he studied weekly, he practices daily, he still takes lessons. So, it never stops. So, but I, I would say, you know, it, in, in the, um, if you really want to have a well-trained voice, give yourself a good eight years. Wow. Give yourself a good eight years. But you should see, you should see uh, results right away, right. and the journey should be quite a lot of fun. Yes. But, but um, you know, after a couple months, you're going to notice that you, that you do things really well. After the first year, you're doing better. After two or three years, it feels like, wow, this is a lot more secure. But after eight years, you're really, really doing well. Now, a lot of people are very successful pop singers long before they get, if they do ever get, technically very, very good. And I'm thinking in terms of like Natalie Cole. Yeah. She had a very, very big career, but she wasn't singing very well. And so she went and started training, and she said that it was as if she didn't know how to sing anymore for about a year wow. you know, while she was doing it. But then she retrained her voice, and then she won the Grammy for uh, Unforgettable. You know? Listen to Madonna. She, if you listen to those old recordings of Madonna, I mean, she was very successful. Right. And so if that's what you call world-class meaning successful, you, you don't even need voice lessons sometimes. Right. But then when she started getting good and actually being able to sing, that took her another six, seven, eight years. Wow. You know? And she's, and she's not the most vocally gifted singer in the world as far as technique, but boy, she's pretty respectable. Yeah. What about Red Hot Chili Peppers? You know, Anthony Kiedis started out, he couldn't even match pitch, but he was highly successful. Right. Horrible. It was painful. <laughs> From a technique perspective. Oh, just a, and, 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 and even his fans would say, Ugh, in concert. But now when you listen to him, he's actually really good. Wow. He can actually sing. Yeah. You know, he took time, but that took him another six, seven, eight years. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, one thing I absolutely love about the IVA technique that we teach is that within that first lesson, oftentimes, we meet kind of that lesson goal, you know, really, really quickly. Okay, you know, you were so heavy, and now we were able to kind of thin that out, and now they can sing much higher notes. You know, is that a finished voice in itself? No. You know, well, that's a, it's a step. I think it's important to, that, you, that you said that, because what happens at that first lesson is sometimes your thinking process is so far over here, and we give you a thought process that puts you way over here, that's closer to where you want to be, and it seems like, whoa, this is such an amazing technique. I, I am so much better as a result of this in just one lesson. Right. And then the next lesson, there's not that big of a switch because you're already thinking with the right terms. So it's not that you're not doing as well, it's that now you have to build on the concepts that you, the new concepts that you got. So sometimes it seems like it's a real dramatic change right away, and then it'll, then it'll pull back because you have to actually build that. Yeah, and how do you encourage your students to keep going along that journey if it's a really dramatic beginning to that journey, and then each lesson is maybe a little bit, a little bit less uh, well, dramatic? I, I liken it to having a puppy. When you first bring a puppy home, it's dramatic. It's a change. Yeah. Okay. And then everybody else that's not living in your house will come back the next week and say, "Wow, your puppy has grown a lot." And you say, "Really? I didn't wow. notice that." because you're with the puppy every day. Right. So sometimes my student will come back the following week and will say, whoa, that's so much better. And they say, I don't hear it. Because they're with their voice every day. Right. So they're probably doing better than they think they are. It's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. God, your analogies are so ah. good. 
So good analogies before noon. And uh, finally, I, I hope this would be maybe a, a little bit of a, just a pop it off the top of your head. But Craig also asked, yeah, maybe, um, Craig also asked, who are some current popular singers to listen to that have good range based on technique? Adam Lambert is one. He's okay. really, really good. Um, I think Beyonce, especially in her um, more melodic stuff, yeah. you know, is really good. I think she, she does uh, a good job. Um, uh, what's her name? Um, the, the British singer. Um, oh, shoot. Um, sorry, my name Not is Adele. not working. <laughs> no, not Adele. You know, but let's, you know, but Adele is Adele's doing something right professionally because I mean that's a phenomenal success. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. phenomenon. So while I don't agree with her technical choices, mm -hmm. I like her music, I like her style, and I love her. She's just a beautiful person. I love her. But um, I'd love to get a hold of her and just say, can I work? Because <laughs> we can go far together. Right. You know? um, but but yeah, because it's funny because people, in my generation, the 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 the, the, the what people considered the, the best pop voice was the Barbra Streisand. Right. In this generation, they think the best voice is Adele. Right. right. But that's a very different it's idea so different. of what good singing is. Right. Not to detract from her, I'm very happy for her success. I really, really am. Like, it, it's, it's a good thing. Cause the one thing is, you know, she's bringing back the piano-based ballad. I mean, she's, and she just stands there and sings. It's not auto-tuned. It's right. not a bunch of weird stuff. It's, you know, even though I don't always agree with her technically, I, I'm very, very supportive of her. She's authentic. She's and a lot very of authentic. Yeah. Yes, and I love her. Beautiful. Yeah, and, and, and I, 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 uh, 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 Jake, what's her name? The, the, sure. the, the girl, um, she's really good. Um, oh, well. It'll come to me after the end. Uh, of course. Oh, and you know. can email me, and I'll, I'll make sure to put it in the, in the YouTube description. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, Maybe in more of like a, a pop or a rock setting? Well... In uh, this day and age? Yeah. Mm, good question. Doesn't have to be. Uh, well, in the old days, there, we had some great rock singers back in the old days. Some female Ann Wilson was the best mixer around. Mm -hmm. Heart. Woo! What a voice. Wow. And, it, and it lasted. It lasted um, well into her 60s. I was probably some of the time as well. Um, I thought that. Uh, I, I thought Michael Jackson did actually quite well. You know, yeah. Stevie, maybe. Stevie Wonder in his prime, in, in, when he was. Not in his early days, not in his later days, but in that song that he was singing extremely yes. well. Yeah. Well, guys, Donna, Donna, Summer, Donna Summer, Donna Summer was a, a, a perfect voice. Loved her. And what did she sing? Trying to disco. <laughs> oh, okay. My, there, there were so many great mixers in kind of that disco and like yeah. funk era. Well, and the thing about disco is everybody always makes fun of it, but remember, that was before the days of sequencers and synthesizers. So those were real string orchestras. Yeah. Those were real composers. That was real horn sections, real harmonies. There were no harmonizers. It was right there. Yeah. Those were singers, player, everything was just right on it. Yeah. One thing that you said uh, recently that I just loved was, if you want to differentiate yourself as an artist, and I'm paraphrasing, but if you want to differentiate yourself as an artist now, learn an acoustic instrument. Totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> learn how to play. Yeah. Learn how to actually play with on mute. Learn what it feels like to do a single take. Yeah. You know? Uh, learn what it feels like to actually go out and perform with just you and your instrument and, and, no, and no help from the peanut gallery in the studio. It, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it, it's kind of a dying art form, and, and I'd like to see it come back to life. That's beautiful. Thank you, know, you so much. Sure. Yeah, thanks, for, thanks for uh, asking me. This is great. <laughs> of course. When else do we get uh, the chance? This is beautiful. Yeah, this is great. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Right. Of course.